Um, Deuteronomy 1, verse 19 to 25. Then we set our, out from Horeb and went through all the great and terrifying wilderness that you saw on the way to the hill country of Amorites. As the Lord our God commanded us, and we ca came to Kadesh Barnea, and I said to you, you have come to the hill country of the Amorites, which the Lord our God is given us. See the Lord your God has set the land before you. Go up, take position. Ask the Lord, the God of your fathers has told you, do not fear or dismayed. Then all of you came near me and said, let us send men before us that they may explore the land for us and bring us word again the way by which we must go up and the cities into which we shall come. The thing seemed good to me, and I took 12 men from you, one man from each tribe, and they turned and went up into the hill country and came to the valley of Eshbol and spied it out. And they took in their hands some of the fruit of the land and brought it down to us and us word again and said, it is good land that the Lord our God is given us. Amen. Thank you, Annie, for the beautiful reading. Now let's invite our guest speaker, Pastor Vishmon, to minister God's word for us. Vishmon, please. Thank you all. Good morning. A very good morning to all of you. It's great to see you again. Uh, we are in a crisis also. And in the crisis time, it is the foundation on which you build your life will be the only thing that will stand when storms, crises, difficulties come, and they will come as we see today. And that is why it is critical for us to keep in mind always, especially in the time in which we are, that God knows the end from the beginning. This is what Isaiah reminded his hearers in his time, that it is God who knows the end from the beginning. What he was saying is that this God is the God of the future the God of the future. Our confidence must not be in ourselves, but in the ultimate power of God to see each one of us true in every difficult circumstances. And difficult circumstances will come. Our confidence is in God's nature. We must know who God, the nature of God is. Our confidence is not only in his nature, but also in his word and deeds. It is God's nature to help his people and he will be true to himself. It is his nature to help his people and he will be true to himself. It is God's nature to help his people and bring out what he has promised them. So in helping God, in helping his people, God is being true to the promise he has given. And his promise is the gift of a land that lies ahead. 
Now you had the reading. He gave them a promise that they will inherit the land. So in a brief narrative of this scripture, we see that the Israelites have walked for miles and miles through the vast and dreadful desert. They arrived at a place we call Cadiz Banya. They were tired and weary. But the worst days were over and in God's goodness, they were on the threshold of victory. But they have to pass through enemy territory. And they were naturally frightened. And it makes sense that they were frightened because they have to pass through enemy territory. You see, the desert life, the hardship of conquest, were not to the taste of many of the Israelites. But we must not allow this kind of thinking as the Israelites seems to do, that if God intend us to overcome, he will enable us to do so without our own effort. We have to play a part Israel could not possess Canaan till the Amorites and other forces of power were overcome, the strong cities overthrown. This, the Israelites, in unbelief thought, could not be accomplished. We cannot follow God with our unbelief. We cannot follow God without faith. This is the plea of many at the entrance of the spiritual life. The way is too difficult, sometimes we say. The enemies are too strong. We cannot overcome. But the New Testament is clear. The New Testament teaching in Romans chapter 8 is very, very clear. He says, if God be for us, who comes against us? The fear was natural enough and understandable. The fear even to come back again to have normal service today in the heat of the crisis, it's understandable that many are afraid to come back. It's understandable. But it is how we handle fear. Fear is part of this life. But it is how you handle it. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ always says, fear not. It is how you handle it matters. In those moments, these tired travelers were presented with a spiritual crisis as well as physical challenge. The history is typical of what often occurs in the Christian life. Many come to the borders of the kingdom of God, but they fail to enter. The causes of failure are similar to what we have today. And the chief one is our unbelief, trust. Because of this, the Israelites could not enter. Every step, if we read the, the book carefully, we will see that in every step of the journey, God has proved his divine goodness to them that they forgot all God had done, unbelief. Now, in this text, the scene is set firmly in Hebrew history. It is their history, but also clearly portrays the 
experience of millions of believing people across the centuries. And like every other Old Testament event, this story we have just read has been written, as Paul would say to the Romans in Romans 15, 4. This story, this event has been left in the Old Testament so that for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us today. So that through the endurance thought in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might also have hope. So even though this is set in their history, but the Old Testament is kept. The story is not about us. It is their story, okay? But it is left there so that in similar situation, we have something to look at, something to take encouragement that this happened and what did they do? So with this background, we are now in a position to look at this text very carefully. And I have given four points. How can we meet life's challenges in the right spirit? How can we, can we see first, have the first uh, slide? There are four points I want to share with you this morning. How can we meet life's challenges in the right spirit? In time of fear, we must accept God's gift. This is Jeremiah. The future belongs to God. It is his gift. And that's why he spoke to Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, that says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans. God plans are plans to prosper his people and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then in the same book in chapter 31, verse 17, he says, so there is hope for your descendants. There is hope for your children. Your children will return. You see, it's a futuristic promise that they will return eventually we will be in the kingdom the kingdom is here it is god's kingdom and he is preparing his people and he has been doing this from generation to generation it is god gifts and he gave it to us It is his future and not simply ours, as if we face it alone or without the assistance of his providential care. God knows all about it because it is his future. In his sovereignty, God used every aspect of it for our blessings and to enrich others to the glory of his name. You see, so when we look into dark and uncertain future, we too must hear what the Israelites heard. You must hear the words which were addressed to these worried Hebrew pilgrims. And in verse 21, he says, see the Lord your God has given you this land. The second point is, it is a gift. The future is a gift from God. And sometimes in our difficulties, our heart fails as we must hear God's words. But if our hearts fails us, our ears must be attentive to the word of God. We must also hear what the Israelites heard 
what did they hear? They heard the promise that go, for I have given you the land. You see, in God's sovereignty, God knows everything about our future. Because this is what Isaiah said. We are worshiping a God who knows the end from the beginning. From the beginning, he has predestined us. He knows every step of the way. He knows how many times we will fall. He knows how many times you can get up. Sometimes the heart fails in difficult times, but not our years. Our years must constantly be hearing God. And if God's words are in us, then we will hear him, especially when tough time comes. God has said to them, enter that potential hostile Amorite territory. As the Lord, the God of your forefathers told you. In time of difficulties, we need to pull the scriptures and open it. But it is like Jesus said in John 15, let my words stay in you. If we have God's words in, in, in us, we will hear him. We will hear him guiding us. We will hear the same word as the Lord, the God of your forefathers told you. The word of God is the Bible. In this morning, children's teaching, the teacher emphasized to the children to read your Bible, study your Bible, it is for our own spiritual growth. It is to strengthen us in difficult times. The Bible is our strong support, brothers and sisters, in times of bewilderment or in time of fear. In those unique pages in the Bible, we will learn that he has given us rich promises about his sufficient help, clear guidance as to how we should behave in this COVID-19 crisis, how we should behave. It is all there. God's sovereignty, that is why he's called the almighty God. He is in control to give us the help we need, clear guidance as to how we should behave. So it is not just our heart to fail us, it will fail us sometime, but we must be able to hear what the Israelites heard. Let us look at the third point. The third point states that in challenging times, we need to remember the faithfulness of God and his mercy. We need to remember his mercy. God is merciful and God is faithful. Now look what is given to us here. The Lord deliberately described here as the God of your forefathers the God of your fathers. He is the dependable God who made firm and reliable promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. You can read this in, in chapter one, verse eight, that even their seed would possess his land. That is Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter 12, verse one to seven. There are many areas you can find this. Those 
two closely related promises of the seed and the land are frequently repeated in the message of Moses. So when we come in difficult time, we have to remember how good, how faithful, and how merciful God has been to you in the past. I believe each one of you hearing this message today will testify the greatness of God, well, how God has been to you. Take your whole life, 10 years, five years ago, and see where you are today. The fourth point is, in time of trouble, in time of trouble, in time of crisis, in difficult time, we need to remember how good and generous God has been for us in the past. How good he has been for us in the past. Because he's God of our fathers. And this God invites us not in the first instance to look ahead, but also to look back. Okay, to look back and remember how good and generous the Lord has been in the past. He is the God of the Bible, brothers and sisters, the God and Father of our Savior Jesus Christ, the God who strengthened Jesus Christ, his own son, through his darkest hours on earth. This God is the same. He never changes. His love for you is the same. The God of Christian history, the God of our own, he is faithful. He has not failed across the centuries and do not intend to fail in this crisis. And I think this is something we should encourage ourselves and worship him with all our heart. The New Testament is very clear, as I said earlier. If God be with us, who will be against us? And so in a situation like this, nothing should deter us because every noble life is a struggle. No one has entered into the presence of God without a struggle. Good men, from the very constitution of things, good people suffer. Even good thing Christ did, the great things he did on earth, how was he rewarded? He was rewarded on this earth with a cross, a crown of thorns, nails on his palm and feet. He came to heal us, to give us hope, to give us a future. Yet he was rewarded with a cross, with nails on his palm, would crown made up of sharp tongues. That was his reward. In time like this, the book of Ecclesiastes says, God has made everything beautiful and set eternity in the hearts of men. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 10. Verse 11, he says, the root of this word beautiful, the Hebrew translation for the word beautiful, literally means bright, okay? Appropriate. It also means timely. God Know there is time for everything. 
So Solomon understands this, that God has made everything so beautiful, so bright. He's talking about the future because the future belongs to a God who is the light. And this is the God who calls us in Christ's time. Let me close this with the words I spoke right from the beginning. It deals with the foundation, the foundation on which you build your life is the only thing that will stand when the storms of life ultimately come and they will come as you see today. If our foundation is weak, we will never be able to stand the storms. God is our foundation and his holy Bible must be our foundation. Jesus said to his disciples right from chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, do not let your heart be troubled, believe in me. And in chapter 15, he said, remain in me and I in you. And he goes further to say, let my words, that is the word of God, the story of God we find in the Bible. Let my teachings stay in you. You see, God will always speak to his people in difficult circumstances. So it is not only our heart that fails in dark times, but we must be able to hear. We must not allow our ears to fail. The word of God must be our foundation so that when the storms come, we may be able to visit the places where God promises are for my business, for my work, for my family life, and for everything. Let us remember this. God is in control. And Jesus Christ is still on, this, on the throne as king of kings, even in this time. Amen. Let us pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, today we come before you and we will remember your activities with the Israelites on the desert. After miles of traveling, they came to a point where they can see your promises, but still they have to enter. You gave them the promise that you will be with them. You have never failed your people in any generation. You are God of our forefathers. We read today your relationship, your power, your faithfulness with them. May we, in this crisis time, seize this opportunity to learn more about you, to depend more about you, to learn more about you, to commit more to you. And as David wrote in Psalm 145, said, let us turn our hearts to you. Help individuals to turn our hearts towards you so that we too can be able to hear you saying to us, The land ahead of you is your future. The kingdom is our future. The coming kingdom is bright and you have set eternity in our heart. Holy Father, we thank you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.
Thank you, Richmond, for the profound message for us. Now, I would like to ask Emma to come in to read us another song. <laughs> 